Thank you very much. Something that was not able to happen because of the uh, question being called on your other business, a certificate was going to be presented, and with that, we'd like one of the microphone holders to bring a microphone to uh, uh, Mrs. Hebert for the purposes of making that announcement. Thank you. This certificate is for our board member, Marianne Gardner, for the service that she has um, provided as the UHS school director this past year. Thank you. Before we move to Article 7, I'd like to introduce Mr. Michael Kudamarsh, the chair of the Ruin Select Board, for the purposes of introducing the board and uh, staff from out of town. Hello, I'm Mike Quartermarsh, current chair of the board. To my far right is Mike Ball, followed by Robert Miller, Chris Howe, who's the vice chair, and to my far right, Patty O'Donnell. Um, way in the back, in the last row, is town council, Richard Couton from Sam and Armstrong. Thank you. With that, we shall move on to article Number seven, the seat of the town will accept the report of the town auditors as printed in the town report on page two. Is there a motion? Mrs. Howe. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town accept the report of the town auditors as printed in the town report. Move that the report of town auditors be accepted as printed in the town report. Is there a second? Moved and seconded. Any discussion on Article 7? Mr. Fairman. I would like to inquire. I'll wait for the microphone, sir. Sorry. Sorry. Um, I would like to inquire, uh, compared to uh, certified public accountants, uh, uh, if, if the auditor could, could tell us, please, what their, what their qualifications are in accounting and auditing. The uh, auditors and or the select board are interrogated if they so choose. Anyone? Mrs. Newton. Phillips Newton. Um, I'm not a CPA. I have been an auditor since 1985 for the town. And I did take auditing, uh, accounting in Greenfield Community College many years ago. And we keep up with the uh, state courses that they're offered. There's not too many that are offered, but this past year there was a really good one that BLCT put on. Thank you. Further discussion under Article 7. If there's no one else, Mr. Fairman will recognize you for a second and final time on this question. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Actually, it's a slightly different question that I have for the auditors uh, in terms of who's doing what. On page 50, at the bottom of the page, it says that the Vernon School District Statement of Revenues, Expenditures, etc., has been prepared by Peachock and Company, certified public accountants and consultants. What I'm wondering is, how do they dovetail with what the you folks do? The select board and or the school board would be questioned. Mrs. Hebert? We pay uh, PCHEC to audit our books um, every, every uh, actually, it's Sally, is it every year? Yeah. yeah, every year they audit our books, but that's just the school side. I don't know exactly how that coincides with the town side. We pay for the school side. Further discussion on article number seven. Seeing none, all those in favor of article seven as read, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. You passed article number seven. We move to article number eight to choose a committee for Memorial Day. The committee is on page three of your town report. Is there a motion? Mr. Mrs. O'Donnell. 
I move that Peter and Angela Miller be appointed to the committee for Memorial Day. Second. Moved and seconded that Peter and Angela Miller be appointed to the committee for Memorial Day. Discussion on the motion. And seeing none, all those in favor of Article 8 as presented, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. You pass Article 8. Article 9, to choose a committee to disperse the income of the Marsh Fund. The committee is on page 3. The financials are on page 17 of your annual report. Is there a motion? Mr. Moderator. Mr. Miller. I move that James Brown and Barbara Mosley be elected to serve as the committee to disperse the income of the Marsh Fund. Second. Moved and seconded that James Brown and Barbara Mosley be selected as the committee to work with the dispersal of the Marsh Fund. Discussion on the motion. Seeing none, all those in favor of Article Number 9, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. You passed Article 9. We move to Article 10 to see if the town will accept the report of the library trustees as printed in the town report, and you'll find the written report on page 34. Is there a motion? Mrs. Knowles. Um, I'd like to make a motion that the town accept the report of the library trustees as printed in the town report. Is there a second? second. Moved and seconded that the town accept the report of the town auditors as printed in the town report. Discussion. Excuse me. Uh, that's article. That's another article. This is Article 10 that the town accept the report of the library trustees as printed in the town report. Discussion on Article 10. Ms. Gilman. Do you want me to stand? Please. Well, if you could stand, if you're able to, whatever you're you're called upon. Thank you. Um, I was wondering about the internet access. Why it went up so much? The library trustees are interrogated. Mrs. Knowles. Oh. Um, yes. And could you stand, please, ma'am? Thank you. That is in anticipation of the Fiber Connect coming to Vernon. So um, at this point, we don't really have the exact summary, but we're anticipating it. So we put that in there. It may be used. Um, we're just at this point away from the state. Further discussion on Article Number Ten. Seeing none, the motion is that the town accept the report of the library trustees as printed in the town report. All those in favor of Article Ten, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. We passed Article Ten. We move to Article Number Eleven to elect two library trustees for the term of three years each. Current listing is on page three of your annual report. Is there a motion? Mrs. Knowles. I move that we uh, elect or nominate two library trustees. And I'd like to speak to the motion, please. You may, if the body gives you a second. Second. Moved and seconded that the Town meeting elects two library trustees for the term of three years each. Mrs. Knowles? Um, yes, Mr. Mr. Ball, what's your point of order? This is this process is to elect two specific people to be trustees and representatives. Who are the people that should nominate? Um, you, you raise an excellent point. However, there is an amendment forthcoming from Mrs. Knowles that will explain. So, Mrs. Knowles, please. Rise and state your amendment. We would like to amend the article to read to elect two library trustees, one trustee to complete uh, Karen Carroll's three year term, that would be a two year term, and one trustee to complete a three year term. 
on the top of that, we would like to nominate. May I make the nomination? Please make the nomination to this point. We would like to nominate Janice Pereira for a three-year term. We would like to nominate Richard Red Vesper for the two-year term of Karen Cowles. Okay, I, I believe you have said you'd like to amend the article to read, you'd like to nominate Janice Pereira for a three-year term as library trustee and Rich Vesper for a two-year term as library trustee to fill an unexpired term. Did I hear you correctly, ma'am? You did, thank you. Is there a, a second on the amendment? Moved and seconded that article number 11 be amended to read that the body nominate Janice Pereira for a three-year term as library trustee and Rich Vesper for a two-year term as trustee to fill an unexpired term. Is there a discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor of Mrs. Knowles' amendment, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. Now you have moved back to the amended article your Article 11, as amended, to nominate Janice Pereira for a three-year term as library trustee and Richard Vesper for a two-year term as library trustee. Further discussion on the article. Seeing none, all those in favor of Article 11, as amended, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. You passed Article number 11. We move to article number 12 to see if the town will raise 113,576, excuse me, 113,576 dollars and appropriate the sum of 130,865 dollars for the administration of the Vernon Free Library. The amount is equal to the budget of 130,865 dollars minus $17,289 in excess funds from the 2010-2011 budget and the report on page 35 of your annual report. Is there a motion? Mrs. Knowles. I make the motion that the town raise $113,576 and appropriate the sum of $130,000 865400 for the administration of the Vernon Free Library. This amount is equal to the budget of 130865 minus 17289 in excess funds from the 2010-2011 budget. Is there a second? Moved and seconded, the town raised $113,576, an appropriate sum of 130000 $865 for administration of the Vernon Free Library. This amount is equal to the budget of $130,865 minus $17,289 in excess funds from the 2010-2011 budget. Discussion on Article 12. And in the middle of the room, please identify yourself, ma'am, when I hand you a microphone. No, no, that's that, that that's that's you. And the microphone is coming. Margaret Trask. Uh, um, I was just wondering what the uh, under new equipment, two thousand dollars. What would the new equipment be? The library trustees are interrogated, Mrs. Morris. We're hoping to replace the computers, and so we've appropriated that amount to um, to do that. Thank you. Further discussion, Article 12. Mr. Paul Miller. I, I, just looking over the proposed budget, you have a, the uh, employee insurances of $19,000. For this year, $20,000. That seems like a lot of insurance for, for the number of personnel that you would have for the hours of open. $20,000 would they pay? The library trustees interrogated Mrs. Knowles. We agree. Um, we're required to provide the maximum amount of insurance, not that we're hoping, but in case we had a new director and they came to need a family plan, we would have to provide in the budget for the maximum amount of insurance that 
any employee uh, you might have placed. Um, that's one of the reasons why we have 117,000. It hasn't always been used, but we have to provide for it. Further discussion? Article number 12, Mrs. Unitas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Marcella Unitas. Um, I'd like to state I am a very big fan of the library. I, I know that um, necessary it is for many of us. But am I understanding we had overage of 17,000 last year? And, and that was probably due to the insurance. Again, we have to provide the right. maximum amount and it's not always used. So then we put that towards the next I, I would like to make an amendment that we bring this amount down. Um, the 130,000 back to the 113. In lieu of that we've all got to make cuts. This is something that we're all going to have to do in the future. And if at that point we do get a direct or if it's needed, we address it at next town meeting. But that somewhere we've got to start cutting. I use the library. I'm very sympathetic, but I'm, I'm making an amendment that we raise the 113 in lieu of the 130. So if I am hearing your amendment correctly, Mrs. Unitas, you would like to amend the, the bottom line of the appropriation to $113,865? Yes. Is there a second on the amendment? The amendment dies for lack of a second, ma'am. Very good, thank you. Further discussion on Article Number 12. Mr. Fairman. Uh, just a moderator, uh, uh, recalling uh, Mr. Miller's question, it occurred to me, uh, knowing that generally uh, group insurance is cheaper uh, than the, 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 the more people are in the group, do we have a single insurance group that covers all town employees, including the employees of the library? The, li the library trustees and or the uh, select board are interrogated on this question. Mr. Kudemarsh. Uh, Mr. Fairman, the, the current policy that we have through passive covers all the town employees, including the library uh, employees. Thank you. Further discussion on Article Number Twelve, Mrs. Joven. I believe this is this is your second time on this question. This is my first time. Your first time. Okay, I stand corrected. Thank you. Please proceed. I was just wondering how much employees uh, make for a contribution. Where I work, we make a big contribution, and I don't think there's a big enough contribution here in this town. The select board is interrogated. Mr. Uh, the contribution would be 15%. We will allow you to follow up, ma'am. I said that's very low. We pay um, almost 25 to 35% where I work, depending on how many years you've been there. Thank you. Further discussion, Article 12? Seeing none, we will move for a vote. Again, the article is that the town raised $113,576 and appropriate the sum of $130,865 for the administration of the Vernon Free Library. The amount is equal to the budget of $130,865 minus $17,289 in excess funds from the 2010-2011 budget. All those in favor of Article 12 is read, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. You have passed Article 12. We move to Article 13 to see if the town will raise and appropriate the sum of $1,000 to be expended by Vernon Historians, Inc. for the purchase and preservation of historic items and for copying and printing historic Vernon photographs and printed items and for supplies to properly conserve the same. Also to be used for expenses involving programs of historic interest that will be or may be made available to the general public. 
and you can find information on page 28 of your annual report. Is there a motion? Mrs. Howell. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town raise and appropriate the sum of $1,000 to be expended by the Vernon Historians, Inc. for the purchase and preservation of historic items and for copying and printing historic Vernon photographs and printed items, and for supplies to properly conserve the same, also to be used for expenses involving programs of historic interest that will be or may be made available to the general public. Is there a second? second? Moved and seconded the town raise and appropriate the sum of $1,000 to be expended by the Vernon Historians, Inc. for purchase and preservation of historic items and for copying and printing historic Vernon photographs and printing My. And for supplies to properly conserve the same. Also to be used for expenses involving programs of historic interest that will be or may be made available to the general public. Discussion on Article 13. Mr. Mark Parker. Barbara, is that enough money? This is mostly in it's, it's, it sounds like a silly question. I know we're all going to want to cut money here and there throughout the night, and I understand that. But for what the historians do, I, don't, I can't speak for everybody, but if any of you have gotten the Vernon DVD, I mean, my wife and I purchased it. It's a fantastic video. If you haven't gotten it yet, for historical, for the historical of it, I mean, I learned things I never knew. And for me, that's not much, but, but I'm serious. Is $1,000 enough for what you folks are trying to do on a yearly basis? Well, thank you very much for your remarks, first of all. But yes, uh, I feel that that would be enough to accomplish what we would like to do during one year. We may come back every year, however, for a thousand dollars or more. But for this year, yes, thank you. Further discussion, Article 13. Seeing none, all those in favor of the article as read, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. You pass Article 13. This is a good place for a commercial that the historians are doing their food sale at tomorrow's townwide babbling, so you have a further chance to support their cause with that effort there. I always do. Thank you. We move to Article 14 to see if the town will raise an appropriate sum of $20,000 to be placed in the previously established Elderly Assistance Fund. The information is on page 9, the written report, page 29 of your annual report. Is there a motion? Mr. Moderator. Mr. Miller. I move that the town raise and appropriate the sum of $20,000 to be placed in the previ previously established Elderly Assistance Fund. Second. Moved and seconded the town raise and appropriate the sum of $20,000 to be placed in the previously established Elderly Assistance Fund. Discussion on the motion. And seeing none, all those in favor of Article Number 14 as presented, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. We pass Article 14. We move to Article 15 to see if the town will raise and appropriate the sum of $66,000 for the repair of damaged headstones at all town cemeteries. Information on page 18, written report, page 29. Is there a motion on the floor? Right. Mrs. Howe. I move that the town raise and appropriate the sum of $66,000 for the repair of damaged headstones in all town cemeteries. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded, the town raised and appropriate the sum of $66,000 for the repair of damaged headstones in all town cemeteries. Discussion on Article 15, Mrs. Howe, do you wish to discuss your motion? Please proceed. Um, I'm sorry about that. Shut it off because I'm making noise. Um, we, uh, two, three years ago, we had a company, Team Monument, to come in and check out the stones that were fallen, broken, or half buried in each cemetery. 
and ask them to give us an um, um, uh, estimate on each cemetery. At the North Cemetery, that side of town, there was approximately 110 tablets, three-piece uprights and markers, and the estimate to fix them was between $4,900 and $5,400. South Cemetery, the furthest one <coughs> south, approximately 50 memorials for the amount of $2,300 to $2,600. In Tyler Cemetery over on Pond Road was approximately 840 memorials, either busted in half, cracked, buried under the ground, or just laying on top of the ground. That would cost $47,000 to $53,000 to repair them. Then the Alex Perry Cemetery, which is on the Skipnowski property. It's a small one that's off in the field, and it has just, within the last 10 years, um, been made, made an open cemetery, so the town had to take it over. <coughs> it has approximately 26 memorials for the cost of between $1,400 and $1,600. Last but not least is the Whithead, which is um, just before Ty, uh, Newton Road, as you go down the hill, it sits off to the side, off of Route 142. That is approximately 65 memorials at the price of $3,000 to $3,400 each. I mean, for those. Total. And I'm open for questions. And Mary Lynn here, our chairman, is here as well. Further discussion on the article. Mr. Lane in the back of the room had raised his hand first. Please identify yourself. Thank you, Scott Lane. Um, first off, I'd like to say, with all due respect, I wish the estimate was a little more recent than three years ago. Um, and again, I spoke to this last year. I don't feel this is the year to be doing this with the fuel prices this high. People are having a hard time paying taxes, heating oil. Um, and, and again, you know, I appreciate all you do, but um, I, I hope the body holds this down. Further discussion, article number 15, the gentleman in front of him. Please identify yourself, sir. And Charles Burkle. Um, my wife is in business for a memorial company down in Holyoke. Um, where did you get these estimates from and what company? Uh, some of these estimates seem very high. Because I do company installs or brothers, and what I've heard in the past, and that's some of those estimates are very, very high on the companies that you got the uh, quote from, in fact. The board and or the cemetery committee is interrogated. Mrs. Um, Howard. Um, our estimate came from Keene Monument Company from Keene, New Hampshire. We had asked a couple of other ones, but we, these, this was the only company that did come. and. Um, and do this. They're not actual estimates, it's approximate. Um, I probably shouldn't have used the um, term um, estimate, but it's an approximate. We will allow you a follow-up question, sir. Uh, my suggestion is to uh, deal with some other different monument companies and have them deal with the quarries that sell them the monuments direct from Barry, a um, couple others that are in the states and all that, you'll find that some of the estimates you have, you can buy brand new mines at those prices. Further discussion on article number 16, this is your next. <coughs> Just want them to remain in good condition. So, I 
that I don't know where that would come from to just replace them. Um, and to say this is a bad year, like anything deteriorating or, or wasting away, it's only going to get worse. So the cost will be greater later than it would be now. Um, I do believe we owe this to our fellow residents, our forefathers, uh, to make sure their gravestones remain standing <coughs> properly in our community. So I don't believe it's a waste of money. I believe it will cost more later. Uh, and for many of us that have been here for generations, it's our only link to our families. That's my opinion on it. Further discussion, Article Number 15. <coughs> Mrs. Bostick. Good to see you, Barbara. Okay. Uh, I would like to echo some of the words that we just heard. <coughs> and I support the motion. Um, I think for two reasons. One, for tradition, because Vernon has for, since its original founding, supported its cemeteries. It has uh, very interesting and valuable historical monuments in town. And I would agree that they should not be replaced by anything new, and that they should be repaired and preserved. Uh, the second reason I would support it is pride and respect. And I think that um, respect for those who came before us uh, is important. It's part of the reason our town is still here. And those same people who are lying in those cemeteries are the ones who made it possible for us to be here. The third reason is that um, I pay taxes like all of you do. Um, we have a very fine recreation department which I do not use, but I wouldn't dream that I, some of my taxes would go toward that purpose. However, all of us are going to use the cemetery someday. <laughs> <laughs> and I would like, like to think that in the future, that the cemeteries will be preserved, and I would like to see the action taken now to keep them up to, to repair the present stones so that they're uh, preserved. In the back of the room, Mr. Gasset. Dan Gasset, I'd like to support the motion, but I would like a little bit more clear delineation of exactly how the monies are going to be spent and what they're going to do for the money. As we all live in the realm of estimates, they always go over, right? It's just the way the factors of life are. And so if we could get a clear idea of exactly how the money is going to be spent, what they're going to do for it, who's going to oversee it, I clearly would support the motion, but I just need more information. Further discussion on the motion? Oh, excuse, excuse me, you got a board interrogated first. We will allow you that opportunity, ma'am. Thank you very much. Um, what I have here, and we certainly would not go by these alone. We, we went by these because this is what we had at the time. We would certainly, they would go out to bid with bid specs. We would, the committee would work with um, um, professionals, perhaps yourself, Dale, even, um, to, to um, try to get the best price we can um, and get them repaired like we like. But what, what, is, is here, and what we asked for, what he said, was all repairs will be done by standards which are acceptable to the industry. Concrete will be used when necessary, and, epox and epoxy, um, and in parentheses they have A7, A-7, or CON-APP manufactured by uh, Granite City Tool will be, will be of limited use. And it says an itemized list of the stone names with the repairs um, would be provided at the time. So Thank you. Kind of go with that. Uh, Mr. Kudemarsh, would you like to add something? I, I would just like to add that, that in the spirit of what the cemetery committee is trying to do here, um, 
they were seeing if they could get the support of the townspeople to, to fund this project. And from there, uh, a formal RFP would go out to a, a bunch of various um, companies that do this, and, and we would go from there. But it would be through the formal RFP process, and, and all of the, the specifications would be known to, to everyone. And I guess that's it. Further discussion on the motion. Ms. Jobim had her hand up waiting for any of the rest of it. wondering if it's ever been the responsibility of the families to fix the headstones um, in my father's buried in New York and we were required to do that to fix his headstone and I was wondering if that's something that could be done instead. Mrs. Chow? Yes, um, that is part of our guidelines and, um, and, and cemetery rules that uh, people have to take care of their families things but these are very very old stones. <coughs> they're old, they're the older ones. I don't even know if the family, some of you can't read the writing on them. Um, some of them are big, half buried into the ground. Um, and yeah, some are missing. And we do have a whole bunch of things that were, um, um, I think they're um, uh, corner posts, but I'm not sure that we have set off to the side. Further discussion on the question. I believe Mr. Tripp has hand up waiting for anybody. Uh, did you still want to speak, sir? Then we will go to Mr. Andrews, who has not been called upon yet. Please proceed. David Andrews. When I was 10 years old, I visited the cemetery in the town that I grew up in and found the grave of Ben McDonald's family and then started to learn the history of that grave cemetery. And that started um, a lifelong um, avocation where when I first came to town, one of the first places I would stop at is the town cemetery, which was in Blue Vernon in 1990. You're absolutely right, it's our perpetual history. We have to maintain this. As I hear this debate, um, I can't help but think of the, the possible Swiss cheese solution here. We're, we're asking to bite off a mighty big chunk all at once. And I have to wonder whether or not any company would actually handle all of this in one year. It's a lot to take. Um, I'd like to suggest that uh, I'm not making the motion. I'm suggesting that we reduce the amount and that we plan on doing this over a number of years. Because the reality is by the time we finish, with all of these repairs, we may have more still. And it's probably going to be easier for us to handle this in a small piece of a long period of time. Further discussion on Article Number 15. I believe Mr. Pond is next. <coughs> I was I was curious that uh, providing this motion does go through. Um, and the money is acquired to the cemetery committee and we get what's broke fixed. What do we do with the next stones that are broke? Do we continue to uh, pass out money or is this going to be a yearly request that you ask us for money every year to continue to fix broken? And then the next question would be, some of these are very deteriorated out there uh, yeah, maybe you can move the bottom half to the top half, but what happens when the top quarter falls off? Uh, you know, when they just continually uh, granulating away. Uh, stone against the weather. Um, you know, I did pay attention sometimes in school, but I learned that, you know, weather does deteriorate rock. And so where do we go with that? The select board is interrogated. This is happening. Um, that's a very good question. We were, um, what was told to us, if we have them fixed, it would be um, probably about $1,100 every year to maintain them. Um, perhaps zero, depending. Um, but we also have cemetery funds um, that that kind of a, um, 
a yearly maintenance program could come from. Further discussion, article number 15. Was there, oh my goodness, Mrs. Harris. I gotta put eyes in the back of my head. Many of these really old stones, um, a long time ago before any of us were here, their families paid for perpetual care to take care of them. And I found a listing of that, I did a research. Do you know that they paid the equal amount, they could have bought a new house for what they paid the town for perpetual care of these lots. And I think that says a lot for them, for their dedication. Thank you. Further discussion? Mr. Parker. I did not call the question. Uh, Sorry, you, you need to be recognized to call the question, sir. I, I will only do that to people who, who will uh, stand up and allow themselves to be recognized on the record. Mr. Parker, please continue. Mayor Parker again. Uh, last year, we appropriated $66,000 for the same month. We did. Oh, it was voted down. I stand corrected then. I didn't read it all the way through. Further discussion? Mr. Fairman in the back of the room. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I'd like to recall a couple of earlier speakers who said, uh, uh, well, uh, a gentleman said, perhaps. Uh, uh, this job is more than one monument company could handle in one year. And, and, and also, as mentioned earlier, the Keene Monument was the only company that came forward. I'm wondering whether if we broke it down into a job for a cemetery and asked the companies to uh, bid on it, whether we might perhaps draw interest from more companies, because perhaps they saw exactly that problem. If they couldn't get it done in one year, what would the other work they have to do with burying people and so on? Thank you. Further discussion under article number 15? Mrs. Sherwin. I understand what Mr. Fairman is saying about too much work for one company, and it is a lot of work. But when we uh, asked companies to come, we didn't put out a timeline or any of that when we wanted work done. We just wanted them to come, we walked walk through all the cemeteries, they looked um, at what was there and said, you know, this is what we wanted, we need to have this fixed and, and what is your, uh, what is your opinion, what, what can you tell us about this? So there weren't any guidelines on that part of it. Thank you. Further discussion under the article, Mr. Shippey? Sheldon Shippey, I'd like to call the question. Sir, second. Second. Moved and seconded that we cease debate. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. You have ceased debate on Article 15. <clears throat> we move to the article that the town raise and appropriate the sum of $66,000 for the repair of damaged headstones in all town cemeteries. All those in favor of Article 15 is read. Please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. You passed Article 15. We move to Article 16. The article is that to see if the town will raise and appropriate the sum of $28,340 to be raised by taxes for the following organizations as shown. You can see last year's list on page 28, and unless you'd like me to read them, I'll dispense with the reading of the list. Is there a motion? Mr. Moderator. Mr. Ball. I move that the town raise and appropriate the sum of $28,340 and authorize the selectmen to expend the same for the support of the organizations listed in the town report for the designated amounts. The town is free to delete or modify any individual item from the proposed list by amendment under this article. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded that the town raise and appropriate the sum of $27,340 and authorize the select board to expend the same for support of the organizations listed in the town report for the designated amounts. The town is free to delete or modify any individual item from the proposed list <coughs> by amendment under the article. I'll read the list so it can be on the record. Um, the, the, 
wait. Please wait until I read the list. A correction on an amount you read. Oh, then, 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 then please raise that as a point of order, uh, Mrs. O'Donnell. Point of order, Mr. Moderator. What is your point of order, ma'am? Um, you read 27,840, and in the, the, the um, town report, it's 28,340. In the town report, it is 28,340, and the list of motions that you all had typed up for me at a different amount. And I read 28340. Okay. We will make that 28340. I stand corrected. Okay. He did. I read 28340. But you're right. What we have here on this cheat sheet is different than what's in the book. Yes. So you were right, Mr. Moderator. We're, we're, we're all right. I'm you're doing a great job, Mr. Moderator. So now, now we patted each other on the back. Here's the list American Red Cross, $250. Rattleboro Area Hospice, $300. Rattleboro Area Drop-In Center, Inc., $3,000. Rattleboro Figure Skating Club, $500. The Current, $600. Early Education Services, $850. Grace Cottage Hospital, $1,330. Green Mountain RSVP, $510. Green Up Vermont, $150. Historical Society of Wyndham County, $250. Morningside Shelter, $500. Northern Vermont Resource Conservation and Development Council, $100. The Pool Learning Center, $3,500. Prevent Child Abuse, $400. Senior Solutions, $800. Southeast Community Action, $2,100. Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, $750. Vermont Center for Independent Living, $500. Hampshire, $6,500. Wyndham Child Care Association, $500. Wyndham County Humane Society, $1,000. Women's Freedom Center, $750. Youth Services, $2,700. Point of order? Yes, Mr. Shippey. What is your point of order, sir? There was uh, also one that you missed, which is the gun place, which is $500, which is probably what was missed in the cheat sheet that made the differences. Everybody now knows we have a cheat sheet. Well, <laughs> yeah. there, 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 there we are. So. Um, give, given that and given what Mr. Ball read, we need to, uh, do, we, do we need to make an amendment at this, at this point? No, that is the 28,000. That, 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 that is the that correct is total? I just wanted to make, make that, sure of that. Mr. Ball? And what I read was, I went right to the town report and read the amount of the town report. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Again, so your total is $28,340. Discussion on Article 16. Ms. Gilbert. Um, in the past, it's been mentioned that it's just pennies on the dollar for these organizations for us to donate from our tax base. But being a single parent, I'm sorry, I cannot afford to have uh, this money taken out of my taxes. Um, so I, I know that we've done Australian ballot on this before. Um, and I just think we should just vote it all down, not do any of it. Further discussion on the article? Mrs. Dutton, you had your hand up first. I'd like to make an amendment to this article to delete $100, or if you see the handouts, um, it's for the Northern Vermont Resource Conservation and Development Council. And on the bottom of the page, in this handout, it says serving communities in Caledonia, Chittenden, Essex, Franklin, Grand Isle, Lemoy, Orleans, and Washington counties. I don't believe this should be voted for in Vernon. Is there a second? Moved and seconded. We take $100 from the bottom line for the purpose of leading the Northern Vermont Resource Conservation and Development Council. Discussion on the amendment. 
Mr. Plum. Tim or the board or whoever makes up this list. Um, I don't have a problem with donating money at all. Um, my question would be um, the Visiting Nurses Association. Mr. Plum, we are currently under discussion of the amendment only. Not the entire amount of order, then, ain't <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Let me go Further the discussion on the amendment to the ordinance. Seeing none, all those in favor of the amendment raised by Mrs. Newton, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. You have amended the article, and the new bottom line is $48,240. Further discussion on the article as amended, Mr. Gassett. This seems to be sort of a consistent thing that we get into nickels and dimes for this whole situation right here. Uh, I understand that, that money is tight and that uh, we need to vote our preference. I think that the, we can vote these questions up or down when we do it by ballot. Is that not correct, Mr. Yes, does that mean you're requesting a paper ballot? I am requesting that. If, if seven people stay on, we will uh, honor that request. And so therefore, the request for a paper ballot has, has been mentioned. When we get to the vote, we shall do that by paper ballot. And the clerk shall run away. Further discussion? Mr. Park. I spoke to, yeah, I spoke to this last year. And um, I am not opposed, again, I am not opposed, again, I am not opposed to giving outside entities money, okay? But we've got 24, yeah, I'm still including, well, when we just voted down, articles of uh, outside groups looking for money. Seven of them are new. One of them that really caught my attention was the Pool Learning Center, but $3,500. Okay, I can't speak for everybody, but it takes me a long time to earn $3,500. And you just have somebody coming in and asking us for money, you know. I made a motion last year that we level fund this so that everybody gets $500, no matter who they are, they just get the $500, we save a boatload of money because we're going to need it in some of these other articles. And as everybody's attesting, taxes are going up, gas prices are going up, food prices are going up, everything's going up and up and up. And some of these entities, their prices have gone up. Most of them have stayed the same. And I would just, I don't know, maybe make a motion that we level fund this for $500 per organization. This way we don't have to have the Australian ballot, which takes forever a day. And we can just get this done and over with and be done with it. Okay. I'm going to, I, I did hear a second, I'm going to refer to the town attorney, how to make him earn his cash. <laughs> yeah. Since we already have said we would decide this by Australian ballot is if by paper ballot, thank you. If Since we have already decided we would decide this article by paper ballot, Mr. Kutak, could we get a ruling on whether an amendment is in order at this time? Thank you. Uh, since the, the article is still under discussion, I, I would regard the latest uh, motion as a motion to reconsider the uh, vote to Sign the article by a paper ballot, which would be proper to, uh, to take up. And, and so that, that, would there, that would therefore require a two thirds? Yes. All right. So, therefore, therefore all, all those in favor of reconsidering the move toward paper ballot, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Nay. The nays appear to have it. 
the days have it. Sorry, Mr. Parker, we're not going to be able to uh, reconsider. Mr. Fairman. Uh, Mr. Moderator, uh, all these certainly are worthy charities. There now are 23 of them, so the average donation is $1,228 per charity. Uh, however, we should bear in mind here that what we are doing is we are requiring taxpayers who must pay their taxes to donate to each and every one of these charities, whether or not they would uh, support them if they were given their donors. So my question is, uh, who decides the recipients and the amounts on our behalf? The stand board is interrogated. Mr. Kudamarsh? Give Mike a mic. Uh, Mr. Fairman, essentially these service organizations appeal to the town via letter and they specify the amount they're asking for. Um, it isn't done in-house, it isn't done by the town clerk or any special board. These are simply requests we've got from these associations and, and how much they're asking for. Now, a lot of these associations ask for amounts based on the amount of services they provide to residents of the town. So that could account why some people only ask for 100 where other people are asking for 3,500. Thank you, Mr. Fairman. I'll allow you one follow-up. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, uh, Mr. Pukumosh, have I, have I understood correctly, therefore, that if somebody sends us a letter asking for money, we simply put, we simply add it to the list of what we're going to appropriate? That's how it works. Well, you know, therefore, all someone has to do, it doesn't matter who it is, to send us money, we don't even know whether it's a legitimate charity if no one checks it. Because there are, in fact, uh, charities out there that either uh, take all the money for themselves or take most of the money for themselves. It seems to me that we may in the future need a committee who, uh, who got this thing, which is very, who got these requests, which is very easy to do on the internet, as to uh, which, uh, as to which are legitimate. And then maybe we need to look at our, our Vernon residents, our, our Vernon taxpayers benefiting from these charities in such a way that we can say we're receiving value for money as opposed to they asked us for some money and we said, okay, you can have it. Further discussion on the article, Mr. Hall. Jonathan Hall. Um, I want to speak on behalf of the Full Learning Center. A lot of people probably don't know what they are. Uh, Full Learning Center is uh, a center for teaching, tutoring, dyslexic children in Vermont. It's a nonprofit organization. It's been in business for now for 20 years, and they only work on donations, nothing more. They receive no government aid, no town aid, nothing. It's all by donation. It costs $1,800 per child to tutor them for the year. Right now, in Oldham County, we have 25 children that are going through the center. Three of them are from Bermuda. So we figure $1,800 times three to $3,500 is peanuts. If they're not in business to teach these children, the cost is going to go back by the taxes and towards the, the school. The school is going to have to hire professionals to come in, to your children, your taxes are going to go up. This is donation that is very worthy. They're out there for you. If you have a child that you know is dyslexic, all you have to do is make a phone call or go to the website, callingcenter.org. Um, the only stipulation is they have to be a resident of Vermont and they have to be diagnosed with dyslexia. Otherwise, it's tuition free. It doesn't cost you a cent. Thank you. Further discussion on the article, the lady in back of Sheldon. Please hold that motor card up high, ma'am, so I can see that you're doing it, and please identify yourself. Good evening. My name is Karen Proberg. Um, just one suggestion. I, I work at SEPCA, and I know for our funding, a lot of towns require signatures. And I don't know if Vernon does that with all these organizations. Um, for many towns, we have to go and get signatures from the, the residents in order to be on the ballot to get money. So maybe that's a suggestion for future. Um, just an idea, but I'd also like to toot our horn for SEPCA, what we've done for the Community of Vernon this year. Um, if you're not familiar with SEPCA, Southeast Vermont Community Action, we're an anti-poverty, community-based nonprofit, and we've been serving 
Wyndham and Windsor County since 1965. And just in the town of Vermont over the past year, um, the services we've provided is we've weatherized one home actually only this year for $12,752. We did emergency heating system replacements for two homes for $692. We did emergency services for 32 households. Um, that would be crisis fuel, anything like that. Or no, not the, that's not the crisis fuel, sorry. At a value of 1,388. We did the fuel and utility assistance for 31 households in Vernon. That was a total of $14,000. And we did a, a training course for one person in Vernon for green technologies, which was over $2,000. $700. So that was a total of $31,629 for the town of Vernon. And also we do um, free tax preparation. And last year we did 19 households for a savings of $30,491. So, and for the SEPCA, what we do is we base it on $1 per person per residence. So that's where we came up with the $2,100 for SEPCA. Thank you. Further discussion, article number 16, Mr. Sheldon Shippey. Sheldon Chippy. Um, I'm actually on um, this one, uh, Lava Creek Skating Club. Uh, I'm here to talk to them. I'm on the board of directors. Uh, Lava Creek Skating Club has uh, been in existence for 38 years. I was put on the board this year uh, with the economy, etc. cetera. Um, it was a tough year uh, to begin on the board. Um, actually, I got to vote in as treasurer, so that added to the, to the fun, fun part. We did an immense amount of uh, fundraising this year, um, and we were able to raise money from Entergy. Uh, they made a, a large donation of $1,500, um, and we've been hitting other businesses up with uh, a moderate amount of success. Um, currently, 10% of the club members, uh, we have six members that are from the town of Vernon. Um, and what we did to figure out the $500 amount is we took how much the ice time actually cost. We didn't include coaches, any of the other things that we have to pay for. We just took the ice time, uh, which is unbelievably expensive. We took the 10% of the club that was from Vernon and then times that by two and a half and asked the town to give two and a half percent of what the ice time cost for the members that are from Vernon. Uh, and that comes out to $500. Uh, I can tell you, my daughter has been figure skating at the Brown Figure Skating Club for five years now. Um, she is going to be going to the Nationals next year, so I'm proud of her for that. But uh, also, one thing that I have noticed is with figure skating, the drive, determination, and the teenagers that we have in the club it is amazing. Having one, uh, one child who just went away to college this year it's amazing to see the type of uh, kids we have as teenagers. And I'm proud to say, I can go back five years that I've been part of the club, that my daughter's been skating there. And actually, I've talked to other members that have been with the club for 10 or 12 years. And I can say as far back as 10 years, based on what I've been told, and five years back, every single member of the figure skating club that has graduated from high school and was still skating, every single one went to college. Thank you. Further discussion on article number 16. Mrs. Unitas, come on back. Yes, Marcella Unitas, I'll try and make this short. Um, I am all for charity also when it is a life-threatening uh, necessity in our community. Um, I do not understand why we would be paying for recreation, uh, whether it be even with, I'm dyslexic. So this pool group, why the parents aren't just footing the bill on this recreation. Um, I absolutely understand life-threatening charities. Uh, SEPCA has saved so many lives in our town with elderly. I, I understand all of the, you know, when it comes to life and death and humane, in animal care. I do not understand why the parents aren't footing the bill on the extra recreational things. I can't afford them. I simply can't afford it, so I, I don't know why we pay for others. That's my point. I don't feel that's a charity. That's a business. 
Further discussion under Article 16 will recognize people who have not been recognized yet. Mr. Duncan. Further discussion, Article 16, Mr. Gassett, the back of the room. I'd like to call the question, please. Second. Moved and seconded that we cease debate. All those in favor of ceasing debate on the question, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. If you cease debate, the town clerk will come forward and explain the voting procedure. So hold your voter cards up so you make sure you can get a ballot. And when that happens, please mark your ballot, place it in the box, and I will declare the meeting in recess and the polling to begin on Article Number 16. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to declare the meeting back in order, and we will resume our business for this evening with Article Number 17. Mr. Moderator. Uh, I need to read the article first before we go that far. I, 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 I appreciate your indulgence, but again, Article 17 to see if the town will raise and appropriate some of $40,000 for the previously established Town of Vernon James Cusick Scholarship Fund, the fund to be distributed in accordance with the Vernon Scholarship requirements. And you'll find it on page 10 of your annual report, Mr. Kudemarsh. I move that the town raise and appropriate the sum of $40,000 for the previously established the Town of Vernon James Cusack Scholarship Fund. This fund to be distributed in accordance with the Vernon scholarship requirements. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded the town raise and appropriate the sum of $40,000 for the previously established the town of Vernon James Cusick Scholarship Fund, the fund to be distributed in accordance with the Vernon scholarship requirements. Discussion on Article 17. And Mr. Fairman. Uh, just one question. Uh, please make sure that microphone is on, sir. Uh, well, I assume it was that it will be, but oh well. Um, uh, Mr. Moderator, I have uh, I have one question about this. On uh, on page ten, uh, item number seven says checks will be issued each year during the last two weeks of January. I emphasize payable to the permanent resident and mail to the student's home address unless otherwise stipulated. My question then is why is the check sent to the student's home address and not to the school to be applied to the student's bill? Can the board or a uh, member of the school administration or someone <coughs> answer that question? Mr. Shippey, I, I would assume you might be able to answer that question, sir. Having uh, my son just got one of these, I can't answer it. The reason being is they sent these out in January, in which you've already paid your second semester bill. So the school is fully paid by that time in order for your son to be there when the check gets sent out. So they sent it to the home address so that it can reimburse you for something that you've already paid for. Further discussion on Article 17? 
Over in the uh, corner, the gentleman with the great looking suit on, please identify yourself. <laughs> please do a series of quarter jerseys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'd like an explanation of what the scholarship is for. Could you get a so I'm sorry, Dave King. And I'd like an explanation of what the scholarship is for. And having a daughter in college, I would apply. Uh, the board is interrogated. Or the school administration is interrogated. Whoever wishes to answer the question. Mrs. Howe. We're just looking for the exact wording of the requirements, which indicates what it was for. It has to be, yeah. Mr. Kudamarsh. Page 10. Yeah. Any Vernon resident, as determined by VSA 16, 1075, may apply for a scholarship for assistance of up to a total of four years each year, the resident may reapply. The purpose of the scholarship fund is for the resident to further their education or training upon receipt of a high school diploma or an equivalent as determined by the Vermont Department of Education. Thank you. Further discussion on the article, Mrs. Ball. You'll find the requirements and application over there on the table. You can have mine if you want. Further discussion, article number 17, Mr. Mike Eber. I'm not sure if it has it on page 10, but there's an additional requirement that you have to be eligible to attend the school either Vernon or Brattleboro Union High School for, I think it's five years. Um, is it six years? There is that requirement. I just didn't read it because I didn't think it was for the purpose of the scholarship. But, but what you're referring to indicates that the resident shall become eligible for the scholarship upon receipt of the application by the select board chairperson or the town clerk within six years of the date of graduation. A resident becomes ineligible at the time or at the end of the sixth year from when his or her high school diploma or equivalent certificate was awarded. Further discussion, article number 17. And we see none, so therefore we will tell you that the motion is that the town raise appropriate sum of forty thousand dollars for the previously established town of Vernon. James Cusick Scholarship Fund. The fund be distributed in accordance with the Women's Scholarship requirements. All those in favor of Article 17 is read. Please say aye. Aye. Those opposed nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. We pass Article 17. Article 18, to see if the town will raise and appropriate the sum of $1,000 for the previously established Town Copiers Fund that was established in July of 2011 by a previous Article 22. Is there a motion on the article? Mr. Moderator. Mr. Miller. I move that the town raise and appropriate the sum of $1,000 for the previ previously established Town Copiers Fund. Second. Moved and seconded that the town raise and appropriate the sum of $1,000 for the previously established town copier fund. Discussion on the motion. And we see none, so therefore all those in favor of Article 18 is read. Please say aye. 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 Those opposed nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. We pass Article 18. Article number 19 to see if the town will approve the Vernon Capital Plan as presented in the annual report. The town is free to add, delete, or modify any individual item from this proposed plan by amendment under the article. Mr. Moderator. Mr. Kudelon. I move that the town approve the Vernon Capital Plan as presented in the annual report. The town is free to add, delete, or modify any individual item from the proposed plan by amendment under this article. Is there a second? 
Moved and seconded, the town approved the Vernon Capital Plan as presented in the annual report. The town is free to add, delete, or modify any individual item from the proposed plan by amendment under the article. And by the way, you'll find this on page 15 of your annual report. Mr. Shippey. <coughs> Sheldon Chippy. Um, so for those of you who haven't been here in the past, every year I just give a little quick PowerPoint on the capital plan. And uh, what we've been doing the last couple of years is I just go over the uh, changes from the previous year, if I can get it. <coughs> as soon as we have this warm up here, I can... Uh, Basically what we'll do is we'll go through any changes to the capital plan uh, line by line. So the finance committee meets uh, quite a few times uh, going over this capital plan. So we have always have a strategy that we try to go over. Uh, we bring this up every year. So what we try to do is ask the tough questions. Uh, we trust but verify. Uh, not be afraid to make tough decisions and our recommendations to the townspeople on the select board. And uh, the, I think the most important is to get straight talk to the town and the select board so fiscally prudent decisions can be made. Again, as I said before, the PowerPoint's only going to be addressing line items that we've added, deleted, modified. Um, if you have any questions when I get done with this, feel free to ask any questions about anything that we don't go over or that I do go over. And uh, I hopefully should be able to answer that. So the first item that we had to change on uh, is the three-quarter ton pickup truck. It is in the capital plan right now for 2011-2012. Really the only change is we're not planning on replacing it between now and the end of the fiscal year, which is in a few months. So we're moving it out a year. And this is really just an editorial change. It's just keeping the plan current so that we don't have things uh, like we had in the class, past where you have money sitting there to replace something. It doesn't need to be replaced. And it says it's used years, five or six years before. Again, on the same lines, we have the town clerk copy it. Again, it was 2011-12. Uh, it's not needed to be replaced. Um, so again, this is just an editorial change just to keep the plan so there's a big item that you will not see in the capital plan. So this is one to pay attention to. We have, um, I believe she's passing it out now. We have some information here so that you can actually see it on paper, some of the changes. This actually came to a point right before this got put into the town report. So a few years ago, we were at three police cruisers and at the town meeting, I think it was three years ago, they, voted to drop down to two police cruisers. At the time, the Crown Vic was to be run until it was at the end of useful life, and then we weren't going to replace it, and that's how we're going to drop down to two. It is still in use today, so currently the police department does have three police cruisers, but going forward with the capital plan the way it is, it would drop down to two. Uh, the, as I said, in the capital plan, um, in the town of Port, it is printed with two vehicles. The select board had made the choice to put it in as two vehicles because that's the way it was last voted. Um, the police department has requested to go back up to three vehicles. Um, I will let the chief, uh, on some of these questions, we had discussions. I can let her answer you know, specific questions on, on why she needs three, but we did try to go over some of the reasons for three, some of the reasons for two. The finance committee didn't actually make a determination on on this of yes we need three or yes we need two and I'll go into a little more detail on that. Uh, one of the main reasons for three that was given to us is we are going to be going to two officers on duty on the weekends. Uh, and if we had three cruisers that would allow a spare vehicle. So if one were to go down, um, was being serviced, anything like that. So. Uh, they would have a third cruiser as a spare, and we'd be right where we're at now. So the finance committee had a lot of discussions about this, and then we actually uh, had a few discussions with the chief, and we worked back and forth to try to minimize the cost of going to three. Uh, I was a great proponent of going to two uh, a few years ago when we did, and when we were at three, we were replacing them 
but with a six-year useful life. So we were replacing a cruiser every two years and had three cruisers. Um, after speaking with the chief based on mileage, we looked at mileage and really based on mileage alone, no other factors, the need is, the need is two cruisers. Um, if we were to go to three cruisers based on mileage, we think we could get a more useful life out of them because the big thing with vehicles is mileage. Age does count. We felt going from six years to nine year useful life we would still be in a good point. We didn't want to go any farther beyond nine years because then vehicles are getting old and they're going to start breaking just from age and not mileage. Um, again, the Finance Committee only analyzed the monetary side of the issue. We didn't get into any of politics. We didn't get into does the police department need two people on duty, anything like that. That's the chief's, you know, that's her job to, to run the department. So if we want to go to three cruisers, then we will have to amend it from the floor here in order to do that. My plan is there's two things that we're possibly going to be making an amendment tonight. My plan was to amend one at a time. That way we can have a discussion on that particular thing. When, when the townspeople decide if they want those particular amendments, then I can know the numbers and I can give you exact numbers to go forward on the fine. And I think that's going to be the easiest way to do the capital plan. So as I said before, we're going to increase the useful life of the cars to nine years because we're going to have less mileage per year. The way the capital plan would be was one four-wheel drive vehicle, so it would be an SUV. In the past, we've had a truck. Currently, we have an SUV, and I think that's probably uh, what's wanted going forward. And then the other two vehicles will be cars. With the increase of, here's a big thing, is with the increase of the useful life to nine years, we are able to make it so that there is no capital cost increase at all. As far as the capital plan, you'll actually, if you look at the plans for the next couple of years, you'll see the cost go down. But over the long run, and it's we're talking hundreds of dollars, like two or three hundred dollars, over the long run, the capital cost will be exactly the same whether we have two or three. Um, it does allow a spare vehicle if one if one is unavailable and two officers on duty, and we are still replacing the vehicles every three years, not every two like we were in the past. Some of the some of the reasons for two cars. Uh, overall, operational costs will be lower. Capital costs will be the same, um, but the finance committee felt that money-wise, if you have three vehicles, you're registering three vehicles, you're insuring three vehicles, and you're maintaining three vehicles. You're not putting as much mileage on each, so the oil changes and stuff shouldn't come as often. But having worked in the, the automotive business for 15 years, cars do break. And with three vehicles over having two vehicles, you're going to spend more on three cars. Uh, the vehicles in the fleet, if we were at two cars, will be newer because we're going to be doing six-year useful life versus nine-year useful life. And really what we're figuring useful life on is based on mileage. We're figuring it out uh, to a certain mileage and have that be the useful life. Uh, we would have one four-wheel drive vehicle and one car. It will cover the need of two officers on duty at a time. Uh, so we didn't go in and, and actually make a recommendation like I said. What we found is need by mileage is two cars. We can go to three, capital costs are the same. Uh, you're gonna have increased costs on other things, but it is a really small amount of money, so it's really up to the town people on, on what, they, what they want. So that's all I have as far as police cruisers. Once we make the amendment, if people have questions, then we can get in there and we can go over that. The second amendment we'll have to make from the floor is the Vernon School Generator. It's due to replace this next fiscal year, 2012-2013. If you look in the book, it's $55,000. That needs to be increased to $80,000. There's an increase of $25,000 in projected costs. We found out about this uh, approximately three weeks ago, I believe. So to give a little bit, and, and I'm going to stand up in front of everybody and say, this screw up, I, I'll take this one as I own it because one of the things I do is try to go through and verify every line item. This is a line item that is a kind of a school item that we can fund on the town side because we have Vermont Yankee in our town roles, we don't have one in our school roles. So it's actually a tax savings, anything we can fund for the school on the town side. Because of emergency management and those type of things and the school being a shelter, we can fund this on the town side so it saves money. 
Uh, the mistake I made is we were given quotes a couple of times and it was at the $55,000 we thought it was good. That did not include installation and I actually didn't call the places to verify. So <coughs> I will take that as, as my screw up. Um, I kind of had the feeling of we were just putting it in our roles for tax reasons and I thought the school board was, you know, completely on top of it and you know, I didn't do exactly everything I should have. I figured this one out so that's, this won't happen going forward. Uh, the cost increase is due to high installation costs. Um, I believe, and I can't talk to all the details, but I believe there's some wiring that we weren't planning on as well. So there's actually more to the installation than we originally thought it was going to be. So again, this article, we're going to have to amend it in order to account for the extra cost. This is something that is in need. I don't think I'll be going out on a limb to say that if we were to say no to this amendment, that the school is probably going to find the money on their try to find the money on their side to make this happen. And if so, you just cost yourself money in your taxes. So uh, that's just trying to be blunt, like I usually am, and just put it out there the way I see it. So totals, as submitted in the town plan. This is not what we need to raise because there is some interest in there, but this is just the appropriation. Uh, in the town, the town report, 203297 Once we get done with amendments, if we do the generator increase and three cars, it will be 227922 With a generator increase and two cars, this year will be 228297 Again, like I said, there is a few hundred dollars. Um, that's just restructuring with one car, or one SUV and one car, to one SUV and two cars. If you look out 10 years, it ends up coming within pennies of each other. So that is kind of what I would call a false, a, a false difference in cost between the two and three cars. So our plans for next year, we're going to look, continue to look into the vault expansion, which we have on here. Uh, it is currently not being funded, and there was a lot of questions about it, and we're still doing research on that. As always, we're going to revisit all the line items of the capital plan, go over and make sure that they're current and that they work. Um, we're going to look into unrealized gains. We have some money sitting there in unrealized gains that really is interest, but because it's unrealized, which means we've had investments that have increased in value, but if we haven't cashed in the investment, it's unrealized, so we can't spend it. So we're going to look into how we can spend some of that money, because I believe there's, I'm not going to give you an exact amount. It's, it's in the, the town report, but it's in the tens of thousands of dollars. Not hundreds of thousands, but tens of thousands of dollars. Um, if funds lose money, we don't want to go negative and end up costing us more money, so we want a little cushion there, but we want to be able to do some of it since we are, have them uh, in investment so that we'll earn more instead of uh, instead of like a savings account. And one of our big things, uh, which me and Chief Capen uh, have already talked about, we need to revisit some of the plans for fire department vehicles, uh, make sure that the finance committee is on the same page. Whenever you change a chief, what they're looking for and what they might want and need for vehicles in the future might change a little bit. So we just we've talked and we need to make sure we're on the same page and capital plan is going to work for what he's looking for and what the town is going to work for. So items we have for replacement 2012 and 13 is the town pickup, the clerk copier. We have one of the big uh, plow trucks for the highway department. We have one cruiser. We have the town office tractor, the bath house and shelter roof of the rec department, and the school generator. Again, it's at the bottom. In big bold letters, no items will be replaced unless determined that it is at its end of useful life. So uh, I know there are a few things that are here, but for example, the town pickup, uh, that's three or four years we've pushed this board because the one that we have is still working pretty well. We're not putting a lot of money into it, and we don't need one. It hasn't hit the end of useful life yet, no reason to replace it. Our vision is the capital plan be administered for the town policy, which was an issue in the past, and that has not uh, been an issue in the recent past. Uh, we're going to revisit each and every line item in the capital plan each year to make sure our projections are accurate, accurate and prudent, and to make sure we don't have that with what we did with the generator. 
going forward, we want to continue to get the most for the townspeople. Well, here's the big thing, is to try to get, there's some things we need to do. Uh, there's some things in the capital plan that are wants, um, that are wants and not necessarily needs. Some towns don't have them. Senior man's one thing. There's a lot of towns that don't have that. We're able to provide it. The townspeople want to provide it. Um, so what we want to do is try to get those type of things uh, for everybody that has to do anything with this town for the least amount of money possible. With that, um, I would like to make an amendment. Mr. Shippey, please proceed. The first amendment, what I would say would be the easiest, is to go with the generator. So I would like to <coughs> hand uh, the article to add $25,000 for the increased cost of the generator. So the appropriate, we would have to appropriate some of... Uh, actually, Mr. Shippey, we... Uh, oh, that sounds like that's actually the next thing. So I just like that, yep, yes. I would like to add that uh, to increase the generator line item to $80,000, which is an increase of $25,000. Second. Moved and seconded to, to amend the article number 19 to increase the generator line item from $55,000 to $80,000. Discussion on the Shippey Amendment, Mr. Heber. First of all, I'd like to thank Sheldon for his presentation and uh, kind of take him off the hook. It's, uh, Sheldon was quick to take the blame for this, but uh, this is a, an item that we've been looking at for three or four years to try to figure out how we're going to replace it. And over that time, we did get some bids, and the bid came in for $55,000. And the assumption was that that was the installation cost in the whole package. Um, just recently, as Sheldon alluded to, within the last three or four weeks, what we found out was that's installation on the pad, but it's not with a hookup to the building. So when we found that out, we had some in and talk to us, and it's a significant wiring operation and a significant amount of uh, change to what goes into the building presently with the old generator. The old generator is 25, I think, years old and went beyond useful life probably six or seven years ago. Uh, it's been limping along for quite a bit of time. And if we had an emergency where we had to house people in this building, we could not guarantee to keep that generator operating for more than 12 to 24 hours. Uh, it just, it's well beyond its life. And it also does not have the capacity to do what we would need to do to house people from the town in this building. Uh, we could put on a few lights, uh, but we could not guarantee that we would have running water or uh, water available for people that are here. Um, so it is a legitimate need, and as Sheldon said, uh, it, it's a, such an urgent need that the, while the school would do it if we had to, we would put it in our capital plan as, as Sheldon was very correct in pointing out, if we did that, it's going to cost us all significantly more money because the town raises far, far more money on penny tax than the school does. So uh, we'd appreciate your support on this issue. Thank you. Further discussion on the Shippey Amendment, Mr. Andrews. Again, thanks to the deal, brothers. Is the generator that is uh, being spec now the same size as the generator previously? The uh, capital committee and the uh, school board interrogated Mr. Heber. The new generator will have more capacity. It, it's a bigger generator. Okay. When we first sized out this generator uh, back a number of years ago, there was a great debate on what size to make the generator. And what was determined was we don't need to supply the whole building. We're looking at a shelter. We're not looking at running the school during the daytime. And I believe at that point we had actually looked at the power bills and we not been committed and done the peak loading and all. The generator was properly sized before, bearing in mind that not only does the building have increased efficiencies, but the biggest part of the load in the building during the day is the electronics in the classrooms, which would not be running. So I have to question whether or not sizing up is 
required. In addition to that, do you know how much of that increase is for the physical uh, installation and not equipment purpose? Zero. May I please use the microphone? So the increase that we have, the generator is coming in uh, where we expected it to be. So there is no increase in the cost of the generator. The whole $25,000 increase is installation. So it's wiring um, and installation of the generator. And it, it actually just, so, so everybody's aware, I think the quote we got was 23976 I rounded it to $25,000 just to make it a nice even number. Can you say who the quote came from? Excuse me? Uh, the electrician who was the quote from? Uh, King's Electric was the quote that I saw. And the reason I'm asking is, again, the town has experience with this. If you recall, uh, not that long ago, we had a catastrophic failure of the generator the firehouse. In a relatively short order, we replaced the generator. It was a 30 kilowatt generator. And lo and behold, we discovered that electrical codes had changed. You know, we had to replace the generator, but all the wiring went back to the main uh, breaker. You know, all the way back to the main box, all the conduit in the building had to be replaced, the transfer switch had to be replaced. Uh, we moved the generator from inside to a location outside to pass some fire codes. And I believe the entire electrical installation with all the conduits and the transfer switch was around $5,000. We used a number of different contractors and ended up with the, with the lowest contractor and that's a great long sense. So I would challenge when the time comes to look long and hard at which electrician we choose. Uh, in addition, there's no transfer switch required, right? We already have that switch in the building. We the building. So it was years ago. Further discussion on the Shippy Amendment, Mrs. Sherwood. They had in my conversations with um, Deb Hebert over this is that was just a quote they got, and they will be looking at, at other um, bids or quotes in order to do this. And I know looking at that, part of this was the cost of copper. I guess that's up pretty high. Further discussion on the Shippy Amendment? Mr. Dunkley. Um, firstly, I, I want to thank the Finance Committee for all the efforts to the service they provide to our town. I commend them for that. Uh, just a question on the size of the generator. How many kilowatts? The uh, finance committee or the school board interrogated? Actually, it's been so long since we've looked at the, the sheets. I'm not sure I can give you an exact number. I, I'm just asking from a, a standpoint. I've just recently purchased a use 150 kilowatt coming generator from uh, if I can say it's a power generator over New Hampshire for twenty thousand dollars, the, 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 about a thousand hours on it. So I'm just trying to get some point of reference as to what uh, fifty-five thousand dollars would buy. I'm, I'm sorry, at this point I I cannot answer that. Um, but we had put it out to bid with the specs of what the school would need to provide the services for that emergency situation, um, and that's about all I can tell you at this point without having the sheets in front of me. And again, to uh, add to what Mrs. Sherlin said, um, she is correct. It is a quote because we needed some sort of an estimate as to what the installation could possibly cost. Uh, but as is the practice of the school, we would put it out to bid and hope we get at least three different sources to bid on it. Uh, if you get one, you get one. But what we hope to do is have three or more bids on it, and then we look at the most appropriate bid. Further discussion on the amendments? Mr. Fairman, in the back of the room. Uh, and just a comment on the uh, information that we're using here. It seems that we don't have all that hard information, so we're, we're, we're owing a figure which I guess has already been admitted, they hope is too high. But of course, if they have the money, there is no motivation at that point to, uh, no, no real motivation to, uh, to, to cut it down. I'm wondering whether in the future we could perhaps have more uh, 
precise figures, such as we got, uh, we, we asked three potential suppliers of the generator how much they would charge for it, and we got a range from this price to this price to, 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 to give us a generator that, that meets our specs. And we asked, uh, let's say, three electricians to how much they would charge to hook it up. And uh, we got a price range there, because then we would be much a much better position to make a decision as opposed to, well, it could be a maximum of $80,000 to something like, we think we might be able to get it for 60, and we're, we're, going, to, we're going to work at that rate. We're, we're, we're just blue sky in here, is basically what we're doing. Mr. Shippey, is it here again? Okay, so, so uh, one thing to answer that directly is we need to plan for what we think it's going to cost. And doing the capital plan, I don't want to say it's reading tea leaves, but it's projecting out ahead, trying to figure out a percentage, saying a quote five or six years ago at that day and saying, okay, this is how much it costs today. How much is everything going to go up over the next five years? So there is a little bit of, uh, you know, figuring. There is a little bit of guesstimation. Um, quite honestly, I think we've been pretty much on target. But as far as, you know, $80,000, if it does come under, I can tell you one of the things that will help with that is, Anybody who knows me, I'm about as cheap as they come. And uh, I hate writing out my check. I hate going in and seeing Sally and writing out a big check every year for my, you know, twice a year for my uh, taxes. So the one thing is, is I try to push when things go out to bid to make sure that uh, we get it the best deal possible and, and look at all sources. Uh, this came up with a lot of talking when we did the cemetery fence for the Tyler Cemetery. But I can tell you, uh, working with department heads in town, the finance committee was able to save 30 something thousand dollars on a dump truck uh, the last fiscal year. The town pool refurbishment, if I remember correctly, we saved somewhere in the neighborhood, I think we have 10 or 12 thousand dollars left over. All that money that's left over gets rolled in and you'll see in most years it'll say excess and that gets subtracted off the appropriation. Uh, last year, I think we had about forty thousand dollars. The year before, was somewhere around fifty-five, sixty thousand dollars. So, uh, there isn't anything with the capital plan. I can honestly stand up here and say there isn't any type of thing with the capital plan where you hear in in some municipalities where we've got a hundred thousand dollars, we've got to make sure we spend it. Uh, with the capital plan, I can guarantee you that doesn't happen because we try to get what is needed and then the rest of the money gets put back so that we can take it off, take it off the years going forward. Thank you for the discussion on the Shippey Amendment. Mr. Skarapinski. Uh, this is not on the amendment uh, per se, it's just information. When this was first put out, to bid was about, I would say, five or six years ago, right, Mike? Five years ago. And that's how it ended up on the capital plan. Because of the cost of it, we had to break down the cost each year to appropriate so much money. Now it's coming to the time to spend it. As Sheldon said, we don't want to pay more in taxes than you do either. So what we did was take what the estimate was five years ago and we add a certain percent of what nationally prices are going up so we can, as Sheldon said, made a reasonable guesstimation of what it would cost going forward. But when it comes time to purchasing, then we go out to bid, we make sure that the taxpayers, which we are taxpayers, getting the proper uh, bang for their buck, okay? so. The reason why, Mr. Fairman, it, it shows that way isn't that we just came up with this figure. It's been an ongoing figure. The $25,000, we should have researched it. It's not just Shelton. We, there's five members on that committee, and we didn't. And we just assumed, which you know how you spell out assume. Um, anyway, here we are. And um, that it included the installation wiring but it doesn't so that's how we ended up and it was just about three weeks ago that that came to light but this is not something new this is something that you've been appropriating for and now it's time to buy it further discussion on the shippy amendments 
And if I see none, I will repeat that the amendment, and please interrupt me if I am in error, Sheldon, the amendment to the capital plan to add $25,000 to the line item for the cost of the generator. Is that correct? That's right. All those in favor of the Shippy Amendment as read, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. You have amended Article Number 19. I'll also recognize Mr. Shippy for the purposes of making a second amendment. Mr. Shippy. Okay, so this is the second amendment that we talked about. So this will be uh, about the police department and the police cruises. Um, so basically we would be amending, let me just see here so I can have the right information. It's increasing uh, the police department from two cruises on the capital plan to three. And the increase would be, I can give you an approximate, approximately $42,000 over the, between the three police cruises. Um, there can be a lot of discussion on this, so uh, if we had questions between the police department and the finance committee, there was a lot of conversation, so we should be able to answer anything that you guys may ask. Is there a second? I heard a second. The amendment, and I'll par paraphrase that the capital plan now be based upon three police cruisers rather than two. Discussion on the latest should be amendment. Seeing none, Mr. Fairman. Uh, first, could I ask you, Mr. Moderator, to read back the amendment, please? Uh, the amendment, and uh, because, because this is the capital plan, again, the amendment would be that the, and please correct me if, if I have spoken in error, Mr. Shippey, is that the capital plan would be based upon three police cruisers rather than two. That's correct. Thank you, Mr. Moderator and Mr. Shippey. Uh, we're spending, uh, we're budgeting for the, for the, for the uh, new fiscal year, $279,000 for our uh, police department to protect and serve us. Now, our, our, our police department currently has seven officers. Uh, the busiest time, I am told, is Friday and Saturday nights when uh, they, 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 as a matter of course, put, uh, put two officers on duty. Now, uh, if, in that circumstance, they need a uh, backup, where will it come from? You see, the officers, in order to be available 24-7, take the cruisers home. So basically, like the firefighters, they can hop in the vehicle and, uh, and, 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 and take off to uh, protect and serve us. Now, I've also learned from discussing with the, with the police department that uh, the, uh, uh, a, a cruiser costs in the range of twenty-five dollars to $30,000 fully equipped and will run for several years. Now, of course, that means eventually they wear out and have to be replaced. So I would suggest that the real question here is not whether we spend twenty-five dollars to $30,000 on a cruiser, but given that we are paying seven officers to be on staff, how many of them would we like to have available in case they are needed during a shift? If we have two cruisers, we will have simply two officers available because the other officers will have to hitch a ride. Or do we wish to go to three cruisers so that we're taking greater advantage of the money we're already spending? In some, we're, we're paying for a police department. Should we not fully equip the police department to provide the services that we expect them to provide and are actually paying them for? In summary, would we not get better value for the money if we had three police cruisers? Further discussion on the Shippey Amendments? Seeing none, to paraphrase the amendment once again, that the capital plan be based upon three police cruisers rather than two. All those in favor of the Shippey Amendment, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay? The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. You have again amended Article Number 19. We now move to discussion on the overall article as amended, Mr. Shippey. I just want to quickly say that if you have any questions about any other line items, now that we're out of amendments, um, any.
any light items you see in the book? Do you have any questions or do you have any thoughts of things that should be on a capital plan that we maybe haven't thought of? By all means, please ask the questions we bring it up now. Nice job. Further discussion on the article, article number 19 as amended. Seeing none, we'll move for a vote. All those in favor of the Rodin Capital Plan as amended, please say aye. 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 Those opposed nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. You passed Article Number 19. We move to Article Number 20 to see if the town will raise $200,749.28 appropriate sum of $203,297 for funding of items of the capital plan. The money can only be used for items authorized in the Vernon Capital Plan and the fund report on page 12 of your annual report. Is there a motion? Mr. Mrs. O'Donnell. I move that the town raise $200,749.28 and appropriate the sum of $203,297 for funding of items in the capital plan. This money can only be used for items authorized by the Vernon Capital Plan. Second. Moved and seconded that the town raise $200,749.28 and appropriate the sum of $203,297 for funding of items in the capital plan. This money can only be used for items authorized in the Vernon Capital Plan. Discussion on the motion. Mr. Shippey. Mr. Moderator, so here's where I need to make an amendment so that uh, we can actually fund the items that we just added uh, when we amended Article 19. So I would like to amend the figures to, to see if the town will raise $227,471.46 and appropriate the sum of $227,922 and zero cents. Is there a second on the second. amendment? Second. It's been moved and seconded that Article 20 be amended, and please keep a close eye on these figures, Sheldon. I want them read correctly. That the town raised $227,471.46 and appropriate the sum of $227,000 and $922, $227,922 for funding of items in the capital plan. That's correct. Is that correct? Thank you. Discussion on the amendment. In the back of the room, Mr. Scott Lane, please identify yourself, sir. Scott Lane. We've spent a lot of money tonight here for a lot of money that's coming into this wasn't appropriate. We've just spent it. Just now we've spent a hundred and whatever thousand. I know it's probably needed, but just remember we don't know what's gonna happen across the street. You know, food, gas, all this is rising. Um, and I don't see that us as running a residence, you know. I don't know if we're making wise decisions here. We've, we've got to cut somewhere, folks. We, we, we've gone overboard, I think. Uh, does Sally, do you have a figure on how much our tax base is going up? I mean, we're, we're kicking in 66000 a year, 42000 um, Just realize that. The town treasurer is interrogated if she so chooses. I'm glad to see you still have young legs and strong this hour of the night. Hi, Sally Brassor. Um, I did do a tax rate prior to coming to the realization that the 411 that I used can't really be used. Uh, we still have an assessment to do that will change the grant list, so I really can't give you a, a figure this year of what the tax rate will be. 
I can tell you, though, that if everything is voted, it's going to go up. Um, and I think that prior, let me just see if I can, not knowing, and what I did was use the grand list as it looks now, and uh, I came out with a six, per, a six cent increase on the tax rate, which is six cents per 100 as assessed value. That is if everything is voted tonight, all the articles, the budget, um, that, as I said, is using the last year's grand list, which will not apply. And I'm afraid that I can't tell you what the grand list will look like. Further discussion <laughs> on the shipping amendment, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Moderator, what I'd like to do here is not speak to the question, uh, which I'd like to do later, but to ask for a couple of clarifications from the Treasurer because she used two terms that I'm not familiar with. That would be a fair thing to do. Ms. Gasser, please uh, be at the ready. Go ahead. Okay. First thing is you mentioned uh, a 411. What's a 411? It is the compilation of the grand list that the listers uh, prepare with all of the valuations of the homes in Vernon, along with the utility. That's the 411. Okay. The other question was, quite correctly, you mentioned a, uh, a pending assessment, but right. uh, uh, the, the, the figure is currently unknown. Right. Uh, what is that assessment for? That would be for energy. That is for what, Yankee? Yes. But not the switch yard that Delco has? No. So just for a long day. Yeah. Um, do we have any idea of when we will have that figure? I believe, and you may check with the listeners, but I believe that uh, the appraisal has to be done by April 1st. I see. Is it already underway? <laughs> I can't answer that. Okay, fine. So we'll make that a rhetorical question. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Further discussion on the shipping amendment. And I see no hands, so therefore, hold, hold on, just a quick clarification. I, 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 I think I may have confused myself, and sometimes that's not hard. Um, did, did, we, did we already pass the amendment, and therefore we're on to the amended article? No, no. no. okay, th thank you. I, it, it's, it's late at night for an old man like me. Um, so again, we are currently discussing the Chippy Amendment. Any further discussion? Could you us of the, amendment, the amendment was to change the bottom lines to raise two hundred twenty-seven thousand four hundred seventy-one thousand. Wait a minute. Oh, it's very late at night for me, and I apologize. To raise two hundred twenty-seven thousand four hundred seventy-one dollars and forty-six cents and to appropriate a sum of $227,922 for the items authorized in the Vernon Capital Plan. All, all those in favor of the Shippey Amendment, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it, the ayes have it, you've amended. Article number 20, we move to discussion on Article 20 as amended. Any further discussion? Mr. Fairman. Uh, first, I just wanted to say, as I say every year, excellent presentation of Mr. Shippey. Uh, and certainly, we need to thank the Finance Committee for what clearly is an awful lot of it's very difficult work. I've done this kind of thing myself. And it, it, it's definitely not something you do for recreation. Um, I would like to ask Mr. Shippey the, the, the two questions. The first one is, um, uh, you're projecting many of these uh, costs out for uh, uh, many years, even as far as more than a decade. But I'm wondering, uh, how, how, how do you go about adjusting them for uh, you know, uh, price increases, decreases, inflation, deflation, this sort of thing? Second question is, when we get down to the actual nitty gritties of end of useful life, how do you determine the end of useful life? I know there's various formal methods you can use to do this. I'm curious how you folks go about it. Mr. Shippey is interrogated if he so chooses. 
Okay, so I'll, I'll try to take these kind of one, one at a time. Um, actually, on my projections, you guys see here about, I think it's five years. I actually have a spreadsheet at my house. I have things projected out 30 years. So um, I try to kind of keep on top of that to keep that updated. So what we look at, I'll start with the useful life. That is a very good question. And the useful life is something that isn't a set in stone idea. What we project, we're basically planning on what can we expect for end of the life. Police cruisers, we use 150,000 miles, and now that we're doing three, we're using nine years. Um, and the useful life on the snow plows for the road crew, we're using 12 years. We were at 10, I believe, and now we're gone up to 12 because we're finding they last longer than we planned on. And really what it comes down to is, is uh, they changed the design of vehicles. We add a few little things like automatic greasers so they last longer. And I will say the road crew does an impeccable job of upkeep on them, so that's something to be said there. So it is a, a changing thing as we go along is, is looking at useful life. Uh, when it comes to vehicles being as in the automotive business for many, many years, um, the rest of the committee usually kind of looks at me for recommendations as far as that. Uh, when it comes to other things like server equipment, uh, you know, we'll try to find somebody who is a computer. So it would, Mr. Hall will probably be getting a call sometime in the near future when it comes up to server equipment to get his opinion. So what we usually do is try to get opinions from a few people that are knowledgeable on a subject um, if we don't have somebody on the committee who's knowledgeable on it. As far as how do we keep projections, so what I try to do in the capital plan is I have a rate of, for lack of a better term, a rate of inflation. It's not a set rate. We use one percentage for the road crew because of the amount of steel that's in them. We use a different percentage for the police cruisers because basically police cruisers uh, appreciate at a rate uh, the rate of inflation is about the same as a passenger car, and you can look those up relatively easy and, and find what that is. Um, so it depends on what item, how we came up with the rate, but I do have a little Rubik crib sheet of notes, and I keep notes non-stop, and I'm constantly updating them, and I have this computer bag that's got just pages and pages of information so that when somebody says something, I can look back and say, you know, three years ago we said this, and I can go back to the paperwork, you know, if it's incorrect, and say, you know, this is, this is what we had. So that, uh, you know, everything is, I try to keep everything in a little bit of a pack rat when it comes to this. So, uh, I think I hit all your questions, but if not, let me know if I missed one. You did. Excellent answer. Thank you. Further discussion on Article 20 as amended. And seeing none. All those in favor of Article 20? As amended, as we move for a vote, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. You have passed Article 20. We move on to Article Number 21. The city of the town will raise and appropriate the sum of $5,000 for the purchase and installation of an air conditioning unit in the police department. A written report is available on page 32 of your town report. Is there a motion? Mr. Moderator. Mr. Miller. I move that the town raise and appropriate the sum of $5,000 for the purchase and installation of an air conditioning unit in the police department. Second. Do we have a second? Second. Moved and seconded the town raise and appropriate the sum of $5,000 for the purchase and installation of an air conditioning unit in the police department. Discussion on the motion. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Moderator, Mr. Moderator, I'd like to ask someone who is familiar with the pilot office building uh, 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 two or three questions about the, the, the status of the air conditioning. I mean, clearly, the, uh, the police department should be air conditioned. We shouldn't ask them to work in conditions, but we do not ask uh, the officers upstairs, the, the people who work in the offices upstairs to work in. What I'm curious is, 
First, uh, I don't know if, uh, uh, I don't know what you want to put up, Mr. Kaufman, but you may know the answer. Uh, so what's that building? I think that the building has no central air conditioning, am I right? Uh, Mr. Kaufman is interrogated if he so chooses. Yes, there's, there's central air upstairs in the library and also in the uh, town office side. So basically, did the, uh, did the uh, ground floor except for the lobby is centrally air conditioned? And I, I, I've heard that as well, that not only is, that doesn't get pretty hot in the police department, but it does in the, in the select boards and the meeting room as well. Am I correct about that? That is true. So I'm wondering, why are we talking about air conditioning just for the police department? Why aren't we talking about air conditioning in the basement? Perhaps by... Uh, expanding the central air system or putting in a second central air system to cover the uh, the, the, the lower floor, the, the, the cellar or basement. Well, we have uh, take care of the air conditioning problems in the uh, sled board members of the uh, air AC and um, uh, it never has been a real problem. We started the main area downstairs because uh, there's less, less activity down there in the summer. I see. So, so if I understand you correctly, I'm asking you simply because you know the building better than anyone else. Uh, am I understanding correctly that it's really only the police department that needs the air conditioning downstairs? Yes. Thank you. Further discussion on article number 21. And seeing uh, Ms. Hain. No? You sure? Uh, make sure that she gets the microphone. Uh, to Ms. Hain, I just wanted to query the board uh, why this isn't under uh, grounds and building as an item in there as opposed to an article standing alone. The board has been interrogated. Mr. Kudemarch? Um, when this was brought to the board's attention, um, we did discuss everything that Mr. Fairman had mentioned earlier. We talked about hooking it into the main system, which didn't seem feasible at the time. Um, we talked about the, 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 what the humidity was doing in that room and causing the damage to the floor, which we needed new flooring and things of that nature. And, and the consensus was with the maintenance and with Mike, to just put a single unit in there because it would be more cost effective than trying to expand the current air conditioning system. Further follow us. Follow up. Uh, my question was, as with many of these articles, I don't know why they're not in the budgets for the departments where they belong. I was wondering why this stands as an article and is not in grounds and buildings. Um, there was a lot of discussion, as we're going to get into when we get to the actual select board budget. Um, we tried, whenever people make a budget, they add a little bit extra to, to deal with unforeseen circumstances. And, and this was one of those unforeseen circumstances that may come up in order to alleviate the humidity problems. And we didn't want to add just fluff to someone's budget, yet we didn't want to make this, we wanted the voters to approve this, essentially, is why we put it in as a separate article instead of simply. I like an honest answer. Further discussion, Article 21, Mrs. Sherlin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We had discussed this in the Finance Committee meeting, too, and we felt that, that it should go as an article. Um, because it's a one-time, basically it's a one-time thing. It's not really an ongoing budget item. It's once they're going to put the air conditioning in and, it, and it's going to be done with it. And that was kind of like our recommendation too. Further discussion, Article 21? Seeing none. Oh, okay. I, you, you're, you're standing against a uh, dark background. It's okay. Thank you. Okay, please. My question is, uh, 
not having too much interaction with the police. I don't know what their square footage is. This is a wall unit. They're below the ground level, but this is uh, going into, this is one wall unit, one window, multiple. I just have no sense of uh, how much we need, and I certainly can understand we have need. So, I mean, I'm thinking of square footage, they have wheels for doing this, $5,000 buys a lot of air conditioner. And I don't know the square footage or how much of that basement is being used. I just don't know. I'm just trying to make sense of it. The board and or the police department is query. Mr. Miller? Mr. Moderator. The, uh, <clears throat> we had, uh, our Mike had a company come in and they did an assessment of the square footage and it's not just a wall unit this is a it's going to be a small unit outside and then that way the humidity from the air conditioner won't be dumping down into the to those window sills the, the drains it'll be outside the same as the central air upstairs and it's going to hopefully last a lot longer than the window units that they've had there before. They're going through those every year. And it was designed for the square footage of that police station. Further discussion? Mr. Andrews. The fire department a couple years ago replaced their wall air conditioner with a high efficiency um, ductless AC unit, so what like Mr. Miller is speaking of. The total cost, including electric work and installation, was $4,400. Um, and our square footage is very similar to what the police department space is. Further discussion on the question, Mr. Chairman. I would just mention, uh, Mr. Moderator, that the problem with window units is if you want to break into a building, uh, that's how you go in, or if you want to get out of a building, that's how you go out, is by removing a window air conditioner. While an outside unit that is simply connected through the wall with small pipes of wires uh, is, is uh, much more secure. If in the longer run, we might regret what happened if somebody pulled out the air conditioner, got in the the amount of dollars worth of damage that we propose to spend on the air conditioner. Further discussion, Article 21. Seeing none, the article is that the town raise and appropriate some $5,000 for the purchase and installation of an air con unit, conditioning unit in the police department. All those in favor of the article is read. Please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. You have passed Article 21. Before we continue, a couple of notes. One, it's our intention to go until 10 o'clock this evening and then continue tomorrow night. And also, if I, at this time, let the town clerk come up and give us the results of voting on Article 16. Mr. Chairman, We did have a few blanks, I'm not going to report those. American Red Cross, yes, 76, no, 21. Brattleboro Area Hospice, yes, 70, no, 28. Brattleboro Area Drop-In Center, yes, 56, no, 43. Brattleboro Figure Skating Club, yes, 17, no, 78. The Current, yes, 34, no, 65. Early Education Services, yes, 57, no, 42. Gathering Place, yes, 55, no, 33. Grace Cottage Hospital, yes, 40, no, 69. Green Mountain RSVP, yes, 30, yes, 34, no, 74. Green Up Vermont, yes, 38, no, 60. Historical Society of Wyndham County, yes, 42, no, 54. Morningside Shelter, yes, 45, no, 34. The Pool Learning Center, 
Yes, 43. No, 56. Prevent child abuse. Yes, 73. No, 36. Senior solutions. Yes, 62. No, 37. Vermont Community Action, Inc. Yes, 63. No, 36. I think it's probably the South Vermont Community Action. Yeah. Blind and visually impaired, yes, 52. No, 36. Vermont Center for Independent Living, yes, 56. No, 42. Visiting Nurse Association Hospice of Vermont, New Hampshire, yes, 70. No, 29. Wyndham Child Care Associates, Yes, 45, no, 53. Wyndham County Humane Society, yes, 67, no, 42. Women's Freedom Center, Prevent Crisis Center, yes, 49, no, 50. Youth Services, yes, 56, no, 43. Thank you. We move on to discussion of article number 22 to see if the town will raise an appropriate sum of $80,000 to be placed in the previously established town road upgrading fund, said funds to be utilized for road work in anticipation of state funding. The report is on page 11 with the written report on page 32. Is there a motion? This is how. It's okay. I move that the town raise and appropriate the sum of eighty thousand dollars to be placed in the previous, previously established town road upgrading fund. Said funds to be utilized for road work in anticipation of state funding. Second. Moved and seconded that the town raise and appropriate the sum of eighty thousand dollars to be placed in the previously established. Town Road Upgrading Fund said funds to be utilized for road work in anticipation of state funding. This is how do you wish to speak to your motion? I would. Please okay. proceed. Um, the roads that are to be paved in the Vernon Village is Silver Lane, Allison Lane, Christine Drive, Shirley Drive, and if there is enough money left over, Wheeler Road will also be paved. <coughs> Thank you. Further discussion on article number 22. Seeing none, all those in favor of article 22 as read, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. You have passed article 22. We move to article 23. Article 23 is to see if the town will raise and appropriate the sum of $50,000 to be placed in the newly established Town Parking Lots Maintenance Fund, established in July of 2011 by then Article 27. Is there a motion? Mr. Moderator. Mr. Ball. I move that the town raise and appropriate the sum of $50,000 to be placed in the previously established Town Parking Lots Maintenance Fund. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded, the town raise and appropriate the sum of $50,000 to be placed in the previously established Town Parking Lots Maintenance Fund. Mr. Farron. Um, Mr. Moderator, I'm not sure whether this is a point of order or not, but I was wondering, since we're getting close to uh, the time when we want to adjourn, going back to the item on uh, to article uh, uh, 16 on the charities, we decided by paper ballot which charities we're going to donate to, and we actually voted to raise an appropriate whatever that total comes to. Well, according to the nod from the town attorney, that was a yes. So basically, we just take uh, the numbers that are beside the ones we voted yes for. Right now. Correct. I okay, wanted to be sure we made that official. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Again, we are on <coughs> Article Number Twenty Three. Is there discussion on the article? And we see none, so therefore we're going to move for a vote. A motion that the town raise and appropriate the sum of $50,000 to be placed in the previously established Town Parking Lots Maintenance Fund. All those in favor of the article is read, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Nay. 
the chair is in doubt, we will have a division of the House. All those in favor of the article, please hold up your voter cards. The chair is no longer in doubt. <laughs> I just wanted to double check. We're going to declare the article passed. Is the body willing to consider Article 24 before we close down for the night? All right, it sounds like we, we can do that. Article 24 is to see if the town will raise an appropriate sum of $20,000 to replace the computers and the server for the town offices. Mr. Is there a motion, Mr. Kumarsh? I move that the town raise and appropriate the sum of $20,000 to replace the computers and the server for the town offices. Moved and seconded, the town raise and appropriate the sum of $20,000 to replace the computers and the server for the town offices. Discussion on the motion. In front, Ms. Haynes. Fishing. It's a broken record. Again, I'm going to ask why this item isn't under general expenses in technology upgrades in the general budget as opposed to being an article. Thank you. Yeah, the board is interrogated. Mrs. O'Donnell. I think it was the, um, the feeling of the board to try to keep the budget down as much as we possibly could um, to not increase taxes because we do know that, I mean, we're very aware of what our neighbors are going through right now. I mean, we all have neighbors who have lost their jobs um, and who are really struggling. So we made a concerted effort to keep the budget down as much as we possibly could and then allow the taxpayers to make that decision um, as to whether or not the tax rate was going to go up by six cents. So that really is why um, we have separate articles. And I think um, in, the, in the many years that I've been coming to town meeting, it's quite often that select boards do that. Um, and, you know, and, give, and give the voters the opportunity to make the decisions on where their taxpayers are gonna go, I mean their tax dollars are gonna go. But especially this year, it was a concerted effort to try to keep the budget down. Ms. Hain, well, well, you follow up. Just a follow up. I mean, we pay for it. It's, it goes in the budget. I mean, if, if you put it in the selectman's budget, it then cannot be pulled out. Is that correct? And voted on? Or I mean, can can the body say, well, you know, we don't like the amount on the technology upgrade? Mrs. Howell. Um, I'll turn it on too. That would be good. Okay. <laughs> Um, on the school side, you can you you cannot. I mean, you can say you cannot say. But on the town side, you can say I want um, fifty thousand taken out of a, a, a line item. But it's either way. You can do the same here too. That we just put it out like Patty said, so that you can have the chance to say yes or no, and this way we wouldn't have to change it in the budget. It's in the butt, so it wouldn't be in the budget. All right, then. Thank you. Further discussion, Rana. Yes, please use the microphone. Sorry, Rana Zlatovar. Um, does since the library is in the same building as the town offices, does this include? Um, will this include service to the library? That's my first question. The board is interrogated, go ahead. No, it doesn't. And one of the things we looked into was the library just got a brand new server uh, a number or a few years ago. And we wondered if, that, if we could utilize that new server instead of purchasing a new uh, or another one. And the answer to that is no. Um, we asked our town computer person um, whether it would be available to do that. He indicated that the records that the treasurer's office use as well as the town clerk uses are sensitive in nature and to put them on a public file server within the library wouldn't be best practices. So um, another issue with this computer system is what they're using now is so antiquated there isn't even a real server in there. They're utilizing somebody's workstation as the server and 
is causing all sorts of problems on Sally's end. As you know, as technology increases, that type of network doesn't cut it anymore. And there's, and it, it is failing. Um, she's trying to do her work and things aren't happening. So they got a quote from the professional who maintains the system now. That's the ballpark figure of what it would cost to replace that. If this were approved, it would go through the formal bid process and go out to three vendors and all of that. Uh, then I understand that the internet service upgrade that the library is hoping to get at some point is not included. Do the town offices use internet? They do. And so this would be included? Not in what the library is No, asking, but in no. the town offices, this upgrade and all that. They're utilizing the internet through one of the phone expenses. So a Comcast or, or a Fairpoint. Sovereign. Yeah. Sovereign. The uh, town treasurer would be recognized to answer the question. Currently, we use Comcast, which is at no charge to the town for our internet service, but we do have a backup with Sovereign. Thank you. Further discussion on the article? Mrs. Skaropinski was uh, um, first, and then we'll move <coughs> around the room. Uh, I have a question for the board. Uh, why wasn't this a capital expense? It's over $10,000, and it should have been anticipated and put on for a capital expense. That was the plan moving forward. Um, unfortunately, when we got this bid, we weren't expecting that we would have to buy a whole new server. We just thought it was going to be new computers for the treasurer. Uh, then we found out that the town clerk's computers are failing, and then we find out that the town clerk's computer is actually the, the workstation that's hosting the rest of the computers. And again, last minute, we put it in as an article, and we left it up to the voters to decide. Please use the microphone. Thank you. Will you be anticipating this for capital expense for the future? Moving forward, yes. Further discussion, Mr. Pond, do you still wish to uh, speak? Yeah. You sure? sure? Okay, then uh, turn around and go to Mr. Sherman. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I guess three points. First one, clearly, if computers are not working satisfactorily, one needs to look at what the problem is which may in fact require getting new equipment. Um, because I'm a, a veteran in telecommunications and computer pro, I'm just beginning my 50th year in that field, I'm going to offer a couple of suggestions. The first one is there has been some talk already uh, among various people who are involved here about the town having a technology plan. I would suggest that we prepare the plan before and not after we spend the money, and it would be possible to do that on a timely basis. Second, uh, Microsoft CEO Steve Ballmer has announced that Windows 8, uh, they, they expect to have on the market uh, by, this, by, by the fall of 2012. Now, it's much better to buy computers with the, uh, the, the latest version of Windows than to try to upgrade them later. And also, uh, uh, people who are trying it out already in what we call beta testing, which is basically you get a chance to use it for free on an as-is basis are finding that it is much more efficient than the current Windows 7. So I would suggest it could be very advantageous to the town, A, to uh, complete the technology plan first, which is not that hard to do uh, for, for such a small, for actually quite a small system, and B, that we uh, uh, get the computers after our Windows 8 is already installed. Thank you. Further discussion on the article? And seeing none, the motion is that the town raise an appropriate sum of $20,000 to replace the computers and the server for the town offices. All those in favor of Article 24 is read. Please say aye. 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 Those opposed nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. We pass Article 24. We're going to recess until tomorrow night at 7.30. Just a couple of announcements before we close. Again, balloting at the town hall beginning at 7 a.m. until 7 p.m. Secondly, those of you who've asked about uh, 
Melinda Busno's funeral. They have not announced the final details yet, but very likely the funeral will be on Saturday. And uh, thirdly, I will not be here tomorrow night because my work schedule uh, mandates that I will be uh, broadcasting the Colonel's state semifinal playoff game. Uh, I would hope that as in past years, you would consider uh, Trish Haynes the post of moderator pro tem. With that, I'll declare us in recess. <laughs>